let's talk about how nobody knows the day or the hour. Did you know that Jesus likens his return to that of a woman in labor? Now we know that women rarely hit the due date that's given to them by their doctor, right? Some are weeks late, some are weeks early, and some are induced for unseen issues. Either way, no woman knows the exact timing of her delivery even after she goes into labor because some women are even in and out of labor for days. But eventually she will give birth to that baby and if she doesn't, the doctor will make it happen. I remember when I was in my ninth month and I had to be induced for unforeseen circumstances and the doctor came in and he said, get comfortable because you're gonna be here for several days and that this labor is gonna be long and hard. But to everyone's amazement, I went into labor hours later and in the fourth hour, I delivered my baby. That's just about unheard of when a woman is induced for labor to come on that fast and the delivery to happen that fast. Now check this out. We like to refer to women as being pregnant for nine months, but the human gestation period for new life is 40 weeks. And at the end of that 40 weeks, a woman is at the end of her pregnancy. Now what's really interesting is that like other numbers biblically have significance, the number 40 generally symbolizes a time of trial, testing, and triumph. Moses' life could be divided into three 40-year segments by his growing to adulthood, his fleeing from Egypt, and his return to lead his people out of the wilderness. Also, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights in the flood of Noah. Moses was also at the top of Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights receiving the law. The Israelites wandered in the desert for 40 years fleeing the Egyptians and the manna rained down on the Israelites for 40 years. The prophet Elijah walked 40 days and 40 nights to reach the mountain of God. Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights before his public ministry and Jesus ascended into heaven 40 days after his glorious resurrection. It's also believed, based on Deuteronomy 25.3, that Jesus was flogged 40 times. Now there are many more symbolisms of 40, but I think you get the picture. So if you all look around and discern the times that we are in, I think it's safe to say we are in the 40th week and just about at the end. And while we do not know the exact hour of Jesus' return, we can pretty much tell we are just about there. If it's one thing I know that when I was pregnant, I wished for her every single day. I anticipated seeing her face every single day. And the closer I got to my labor day, the more I prepared my house. I prepared my entire house, I prepared her room, and I prepared my heart to receive her. And I think what I find really sad right now is so many people, especially Christians, are so put off by our excitement and our longing and our waiting for him every day, talking about the rapture, preparing, preaching the gospel, warning the lost of his soon coming. People are literally sick of hearing it about it. But did you know that 2 Timothy 4, 8 says, and I'm going to read it to you, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Jesus wants us to love his appearing. He's the one that told us to watch the signs, be awake in the season and to watch for him and to be ready at all times. There are countless scriptures that tell us the season of the rapture. You don't have to believe it. You don't have to heed the warnings and you don't have to discern the time. But just remember this, Jesus called the Pharisees fools because they could discern the face of the sky and tell the weather, but they could not discern the signs of the times that they were in. 
you can only bury your head in the sand so long before the coming tsunami hits you. The book of Revelation says that the time of trouble, the seven year tribulation will be so horrifying. There will be a time where men will wish death upon themselves, but they will not find it. And if you think right now that I'm fear mongering, then you need to discern who this message is really for. Because if you're a believer, it's not for you. It's not for people who are in Christ and saved. We have no fear because we have a great promise from Jesus himself to take us out of this world before the time of trouble. This message is for the lost. It's for the lukewarm and it's for those who have returned to their vomit. If you don't know Christ, yes, I'm sorry, but you should be afraid. Fear is not always the enemy. There is such thing as a healthy dose of holy fear. And you need to let fear be your friend right now and tell you to step away from the cliff. Repent and turn your life over to Christ now so that you can escape the coming destruction. The goal of salvation is to live with him forevermore. But after the time of the rapture, it's going to be very difficult to get saved. And there's going to be so much destruction and deception. You don't want to be here for that. Why wait? Why put off your salvation? Today is the day of salvation. And if you're a lukewarm Christian, you better get hot right now. Because you cannot be raptured and vomited out of the mouth of God at the same time. And if you're one of those people that's returned to their own vomit, stop. Stop perverting grace and making a mockery of the sufferings and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. It's time to repent and seriously die to yourself this time. Jesus took on the full measure of God's wrath and died in a bath of his own blood for you. He deserves your full surrender and obedience. Because y'all, we are at the end of the 40th week. We have come to the end of the testing and the trial and the time of triumph is at hand. And just like that delivery of the baby at a time when you do not expect the bridegroom is going to come.